All right, gang, I have mentioned previously uh, in instructional videos in this lesson that uh, sometimes confidence intervals and hypothesis testing results do not agree. And I, I think it's only fair that I, I take about five minutes and illustrate uh, a situation where that happens and try to explain it. Again, I, I'm, I'm, I do this in hesitation because I'm afraid that it's going to complicate things or uh, confuse you. That's not the goal here. It's just to, um, to, 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 to let you know this happens. Uh, you can put it on your radar and react uh, however you want to react, I guess. Uh, but it can be confusing, but it's just one of the caveats of uh, when CIs and HTs don't agree, okay? And it only happens when we get into one tail test. So greater than or less than, we have the potential for these things not to agree. As long as we conduct a two-tailed test, not equal to in the alternative hypothesis, uh, keeping our alpha stable and using the corresponding confidence interval, which in this case would be 95%, we don't get into that. But uh, <clears throat> let's uh, let's see the way uh, it works. You can st still have the information from the previous um, uh, video. So if I was going to work a confidence interval for this problem, I would go to uh, TSTAT. And with summary, uh, type in the information. I should have already had this done. But I think you're more likely to play along with me if I don't. And our sample size is 50. So if I want a confidence interval, uh, 95%, I don't need the Z critical. Let's just get the confidence interval. So this is going to run from 19.93. Uh, to 21.47. Now, notice that 20, which is the hypothesized value, is contained in our interval, so it's plausible to believe, since the interval we're using to estimate 20, uh, estimate uh, mu, I should say, uh, when mu is equal to 20, if 20 is in our interval, it's... Uh, um, Sorry, I'm not uh, bright enough, apparently, to uh, to speak and write. Uh, it's plausible that we would fail to reject the null and conclude that there's no reason to reject this. The mean appears to be 20. Now, if we do the same calculations with uh, the same data, right, but we run a test of hypothesis for a value of 20, but we run a one tail test greater than 20. And um, let's see what we get. Well, we get a p-value of 0 0.0364, which is less than our stated alpha value of 0 0.05, <laughs> so. Uh, that leads us to reject the null hypothesis. So again, conflicting results with the uh, confidence interval and a test of hypothesis. Now again, how can you make sure that this never happens? Well, just always test not equal to. Yeah, let me show you how that plays out. If we test not equal to, And let's say that we end up, this is super annoying, uh, that we end up rejecting. So if we reject the, the null, what does it tell us? We don't believe that statement. We believe that the mean is not equal to 20. Well, I don't know about you, but just a statement the mean is not equal to 20 doesn't give me any indication of what 20 is, or I'm sorry, what the mean is. And not equal to 20, was it 25? Is it 12? Is it negative? Is it positive? You know, a lot of, a lot of unanswered questions. Well, what I would do next is I would follow up with a 95% confidence interval. Again, assuming this is 0 0.05, the level of significance is 0 0.05. So if I get a 95% confidence interval, of 18.2 to 19.4, since this entire interval is below 20, I conclude 
the mu is less than 20. If I get a 95% confidence interval from 21.2 up to 23.7, the entire interval is above 20. So I would conclude, therefore, that the mean is above 20. <clears throat> so I can actually, in a tricky way, perform a directional test uh, using a two-tail approach. And I, I'll be very transparent in my research. In all the research that I've, um, I've, uh, I've, I've served on uh, to, to this date, 15 doctoral advisory committees. Now, in other words, I've served on the committees that uh, people have worked on their doctorates. Uh, and I've been the master's thesis advisor for, I think at the end of this year, it's going to be 119. So I've had a lot of publications that have been done under me. Uh, I always take this approach. And my students always take this approach. Test not equal to, make your decision. If you reject, calculate your confidence interval to get an indication of the uh, uh, estimate of the, uh, the value of mu that we rejected up here. Now, if you fail to reject, there's not much need to, <clears throat> to uh, follow up with a confidence interval. So anyway, my intention here is not to confuse things. I just wanted to give you, because uh, uh, you know, because I've mentioned this before, and you know, in, in all fairness, it, it comes up in uh, your homework assignments. All right, that's all I got.